Headmaster Dr. McEwen. Oh. Um, Deputy Headmaster Mr. Davies. Oh, also absent. Invited guests, staff, and students. It is with a strange sense of excitement that I stand up here to speak today. However, you all should know that when I was sitting in the front few rows in years seven and eight, I did not share the same level of excitement attending one of these assemblies. I would often wish I was outside kicking the football with my mates or wonder what mum was going to cook for dinner. But amidst my daydreaming, I would find my way back here to the stage and I would listen to the year 12 speech. Some speeches I would really take in, others I would not. But regardless, every time that I did listen, I thought about what I would say and do if I was ever lucky enough to get up on this stage and say a speech myself. I've been at Hutchins for nearly 14 years and heard a lot of speeches by a lot of different people. And I think that the ones that people remember most are the ones that make you think about yourself. Usually when Year 12s get up here, they talk about the chosen theme. If you've been living under a rock so far this year, ours is footprints. And I think that the meaning behind it is a special and unique way to express our year group's personality. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you a story that happened right here in this room on this stage. And I think it epitomises what footprints means to me. So when I was in year eight, a famous AFL footballer named Chris Judd came to the school advertising his autobiography. For those of you who don't know who Chris Judd is, he was a Brownlow medalist, a premiership player, and captained two AFL sides in Carlton and West Coast. So the setup they had was just over here, they had their red couch where Chris sat and answered his questions. They had a line of chairs over here with a panel asking the questions. And then standing over at the lectern was our old headmaster, Mr. Dean. For those of you who didn't know Mr. Dean, he was a passionate Carlton supporter. Mm. So anyway, what they did was they asked him a series of questions about football and life, and then they threw the questions out to the audience. So the Year 12s would come around with a microphone, and if you wanted to ask a question, you'd simply raise your hand. As BC mentioned, I was a massive footy head back then. Not much has changed. And so I thought, like, I'd really like to ask a question here, but if I mess this up, I'm going to be quite embarrassed in front of the middle school, senior school, and Chris Judd. So I thought about it, and then I thought, all right, okay, I'll ask a question. And then I didn't get picked. And I thought, well, opportunity missed. But then it sort of dawned on me all those speeches that I'd had about taking every opportunity here. And I thought, well, no, opportunity not missed. He'll be sitting right up here signing autographs after this session. Why can't I go up there and ask my question? So, session finished. And Stefano and I shuffled our way up here along the line. Stefano is also a Carlton supporter. And we made our way over to where Chris was sitting. And I said, G'day Juddy, how you going? As if he was my best mate. And he responded with, oh, I'm good thanks, how are you? So we engaged in a pretty basic conversation and then I said, hey Juddy, I had a question for you, but I didn't get picked. And he said, oh, what was that mate? And I said, what does it take to play at the highest level? Obviously referring to football. And Juddy sat there and he thought for a second, and then he said quite a few things, which I don't remember much of, because a bit like Mr. Dean and Stefano, I was overawed by the entire experience. But the one thing he did say that I'll never forget was that it's what you do when no one is watching. So immediately after this little session, I ran down to my Chinese classroom with Mr. Ma, and I scribbled down in my diary what I thought that meant to me. And at first I thought, well, football must mean extra weights, extra running, extra skills. Maybe I'll clean the change rooms, you know, do something right when no one's watching. But the more I did it, the more I realised that you don't just have to relate it to football, but you can relate it to life. So if you're anything like me, 
you used to have to work pretty hard in maths if you wanted a C or a B. So in terms of an iceberg, for example, the top of that iceberg is my C+, and that's what everybody else sees. But below the water is this huge chunk of hard work which I put in to get that C+. You don't just have to relate it to schoolwork or football, though. You can relate it to your relationships. You might totally make someone's day without them knowing what you did or who did it. So this idea of integrity and doing what's right, even when no one is watching, or even when it's not the most popular thing to do, is something that's really important to me. I'm going back to my lectern now. On the first day of school this year, I walked through the senior school doors and I felt like I was being watched. Not just by the younger boys, or the teachers, or my mates, but everyone. It really hit home with me that I was now a leader of the school. As both a year 12 and a prefect, I've set myself a goal this year to be the best role model, friend, player and young man I can possibly be. Oliver spoke brilliantly about individuality in the first headmaster's assembly and how he didn't want to be just like his brother but instead to be the best version of himself. That's why when I got up here to speak today, I didn't want to, tell you, I didn't want to stand up here and tell you things you've already heard. I wanted to tell you a thing or two about myself and share a bit of my time here through my passion and enthusiasm, to do it my way. As I've mentioned before, taking every opportunity that comes your way at this school is such an important part of helping you grow as a person. I say it to the Buckler boys all the time. If you try it and don't like it, that's okay, but at least you gave it a go. I've been at this school for a long time, and the older I've gotten, the more I've learnt to appreciate what the school has given me, the relationships I've formed with my mates, the mentors I've had in all my teachers, the, relations, the, the opportunity to express my skills in both sport and drama, the chance to lead groups of all kinds and be involved in countless variety of school activities with such great people. For example, I went to the junior school swimming carnival a couple of weeks ago and was transported back in time. I lost my voice, sang chants about donkeys and whippersnippers, sweated out my jeans in the aquatic centre, copped a $163 parking fine for parking in a disabled spot. But I had the most fun I'd had since I was that age myself. So I could stand up here and tell you all, this is what you should do and why. But I wouldn't recommend the action, these actions to the people in this room without believing in it and doing it myself through my manner, actions and words. So I encourage everyone in here, not just the boys, to exercise integrity to think about what you're doing when no one is watching and to take every opportunity. I know it's a cliche and some of you might be sitting there just like me back in the day and think, yeah, yeah, I've heard that a thousand times. But let me tell you from real experience that if I could trade places with you younger boys, you would see how fast it goes and how much this school means to me. When I leave here, I'll leave a bucket load of tears, but I also hope I'll leave a footprint that says he tried everything. He is a good student, a loyal friend, and most importantly, he is a good man. So do the 50 metre butterfly no one else will do. Run the cross country even though your fake physio told you not to do it. Let your teachers know how much you appreciate their care for you and above all, never forget that when you leave here, you're a Hutchins man. And whether you've been here for 14 years or 14 days, you've been lucky enough to leave a footprint. And to me, that is a blessing. Thank you.